Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we are following up on the Tashkent 39 re review I've done last week with uh, the actual Tashkent, the tier 8 tech tree destroyer on the Soviet tech tree. Just like the Tashkent 39, which is obviously just an earlier iteration of this ship, uh, this one has, uh, has been built by the Italians for the Soviet Union as a sort of destroyer leader. And she was just about finished by the time that uh, things got a little difficult with the German invasion, which meant that for most of her time, instead of actually, you know, doing ship things, she's been more of a shore, she's been more busy in a shore bombardment role, especially around the port of Sevastopol, where she made many trips back and forth to bring in supplies, to evacuate wounded, and to drop 130 millimeter unpleasantness on the Germans that are trying to besiege the city. In the end, uh, she had uh, taken enough damage from, from air attack that uh, she was retreating towards uh, to, to get some repairs, but then uh, was bombed in port and uh, was sunk and damaged so severely that it was in the end decided not to be a good idea to try and repair the ship because it wouldn't have been economical. And these are, if we're looking at the ship now, these are actually the twin turrets. Yes, these are the correct guns, the 130 millimeter <laughs> twins that uh, she was eventually fitted with, not the single mounts that we've got in the 39 version. So uh, let's have a, before we go and look at anything else, let's have a very brief look at the Soviet destroyer tech tree because there, is, there are a couple of differences here. So after tier seven and the Minsk, uh, the toy destroyer tech tree splits in two with uh, the gunboat line uh, of the Tashkent, the Kiev and the Delny versus the, I would not call them torpedo boats, but I would say they're multi-role ships uh, in the, with Ognivoy, the Udaloy and the Grozovoy. The second line has been introduced later and the Soviet ships have always been a little bit suffering from the uh, these ships are relatively difficult to play because they had very short range torpedoes, still do, and they were mostly about the guns, but they're also really more destroyer leaders slash scout cruisers. So let's compare the let's compare the Tashkent, which is a very big ship, to the Ognivoy and see how the two of them differ. Now the Tashkent gets the rapid reload for uh, improving the guns, whereas the Ognivoy gets engine boosts and smoke screens and a defensive AA. Much good it does, but uh, Ognivo is also a much squishier ship and doesn't quite have the base speed that you get on the very fast uh, Soviet destroyers like the Tashkent, but has a somewhat better maneuverability than this thing, because this is almost cru light cruiser level of maneuverability here, and it shows. The Ognivo gets only two of the uh, gets only two of the dual purpose guns, uh, so two two twin turrets. And uh, while they are doing a bit more damage and are having a slightly better fire chance, because they are slightly more modern guns, uh, the Tashkent's guns have the better range. And the reload is about the same, but on the Tashkent you get, uh, you get six of them. Torpedo-wise, Tashkent actually doesn't have a terrible torpedo range anymore with six kilometers, but uh, obviously you're nowhere near territory where you can do things like stealth torpedo. The Ognivoy gets more torpedoes, uh, they're doing the same amount of damage, but have a better range. And with 7.8 kilometers, you're actually starting to get into territory where you can fire torpedoes without being detected. Uh, AA on the Ognivoy is somewhat better than on the Tashkent, but still, uh, these things are very far from being AA destroyers. And with a 6 kilometer base detection range, uh, the Ognivoy is a very stealthy destroyer, unlike the Tashkent, which has, again, almost light cruiser levels of, uh, of concealment. Which means that these are two very different ships. This is a scout cruiser, whereas that much smaller ship here is more of a traditional uh, multi-role destroyer. So on the Tashkent, you're mostly going to be relying on your guns. And you're not actually very good at dogfighting enemy destroyers because you, you don't have a smokescreen. The maneuverability isn't great. So if you play it more as a traditional destroyer and take point and try to capture, uh, try to take capture points, uh, it's a very high risk activity because uh, everybody's going to be start shooting at you. And this is a very big ship and she's very high in the water and uh, does take a lot of damage from incoming fire. But let's have a look on how I've set her up. 
Now, uh, in the Elite bonus, you get two choices. You can either get more Traverse on the main batteries, or you get uh, more damage on the high explosive shells and a better fire chance. I've gone with the second here, because more often than not, you'll find yourself either bow in and uh, shooting just the forward turrets, or uh, you're sort of more in a kiting position where... This is not a destroyer dogfighter, because she just doesn't have the maneuverability for that. And you're better off going in one direction, and at that point the uh, turret traverse doesn't matter as much. And it's also not, not too terrible. You get the choice of uh, historical camouflage, if you want to actually keep the ship, which gives you main battery firing range and torpedo range, which isn't a huge factor, because you're not in torpedo boat. The torpedoes are occasional. If you get the chance to use them, it's good. But you shouldn't be trying to rush uh, ahead into positions where you're just trying to drop your torpedoes because the torpedoes are not that great. And while they do a decent amount of damage, uh, you're not going to be taking out a battleship full health in one go. So I uh, do be somewhat uh, careful with those and just more use them if there's a target of opportunity rather than uh, aggressively as, as your main weapon. Uh, max traverse speed and surface detection are all good things. As usual, I'll be playing two rounds, one with a just standard camo and one with a full, fully upgraded setup. Because oftentimes, you know, people just don't want to keep the tier 8 ships around and they just want to grind over the ship and make their way up to tier 10. Equipment-wise, uh, standard destroyer setup, really. I've got the, the main battery mod 2 for more DACA and the uh, propulsion for acceleration, which she desperately needs because the acceleration on these ships is not great. And despite the fact that this is more of a scout cruiser, uh, definitely concealment because big ship, uh, relatively poor maneuverability for a destroyer and uh, semi armor piercing shells exist. If something like a Lepanto or a Vittorio Veneto starts shooting at you uh, or a Brindisi, then things get very unpleasant very, very quickly. And even just battleship armor piercing, given that these are pretty sturdy ships, can do a lot of damage at range against you. So you do have to be somewhat careful with uh, who is shooting at you. I have played with two commanders. Uh, they, I don't think there is a dedicated destroyer commander, a legendary commander for uh, for the Soviet line, which is a bit of a shame. But I, I am using Kuznetsov here for two reasons, because he has the sixth sense. So you know if someone's actually targeting you and you can react uh, in time to do something about it. And um, uh, I am using the APCS skill here for uh, for, be for better armor piercing, but he, he also got the bulletproof skill, which does a 5% damage reduction from incoming shell fire, which is good if you're uh, if you're dueling things like enemy destroyers. It just gives you a little bit more survivability on the whole. And he also has uh, <laughs> has a repair kit cooldown for more uh, for more aggressive styles. All right, so all in all, uh, that gets the reload time on the guns down to 4.7 seconds. And at an almost 10 kilometer range, what you really want to do is use your guns at range here, because uh, the turn time of 4.7, almost 4.7 seconds, and the acceleration of just over 10 seconds is not, uh, is not great. They are fast, however, and we've got the concealment down to just under six kilometers, which is workable together with the historical camo. So let us see uh, the Tashkent in action, and uh, we'll see if if this is the point where you where you say, okay, I'd I'd actually prefer to go down the multi role destroyer line, or saying, you know what, uh, scout cruisers or destroyer leaders, and that uh, role associated with it actually suits me very well, and I want to continue here. The first round is a domination match on deadlock against Amagi, Black Amalfi, a Congress, and Eendracht, Benson, Fenyang, and Skorne. I do have to admit that I have absolutely no idea what the Fenyang is capable of. I mean, it's Pan-Asian, so she might have deep water torpedoes, but uh, uh, you can never be sure. Some of the premiums actually switch things around at times, so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be careful. And uh, honestly, in this battle, I am sort of playing the Tashkent too aggressively because I'm one of two destroyers and I am trying to get myself into C cup early and just go for an early cup. Uh, and I'm not saying that that's wrong. I do have backup from a Hipper and a Talon, which is a Hipper in disguise. So um, I may be able to, you know, be re reasonably confident here with the backup that I might have. But uh, generally, 
in the Tashkent, you don't want to get into necessarily into dogfights with enemy destroyers because it is a very big ship. She does take a lot of damage from large caliber shell fire coming in. And we now know where the Eindracht is. It's, um, it's somewhere over there. And he's obviously scouted and air spotted me. Now, he wasn't going for the damage with that one. He just wanted to know that I'm coming. Now, obviously, at this point, um, I don't know exactly where he is, but he knows where I am. So what I really should have done here is not poke my nose out. <laughs> but, um, uh, or, or alternatively, at this point, I probably should have been rushing him. But there is a smoke screen over there, and that smoke screen contains something. So I'm just dropping my torpedoes on the Eindracht to push him away. And then I'm running because I can't rush that thing with uh, whatever is in the smoke screen just dropping torpedoes on me. So the Eindracht is being pushed away. But uh, now I am obviously, uh, and I have managed to get two tor torpedoes on target, but now I am obviously uh, too far away and I'm in a gun duel with a light cruiser. I think it's a light cruiser. <laughs> Which is not a good thing to do when you're in a Tashkent. So I am trying to set fires on this thing, but uh, and to turn a ship around to get a more, to get into a more defensive posture here. And we've got two fires going on the Eindracht, and I think he is me he's messing around with his airstrikes. Yep, but there, there, there is the Fen Yang, and again, I have absolutely no clue if that thing has deep water torpedoes or not. It seemed to have radar. <laughs> So uh, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee about anything here when it comes to these premiums, and uh, I should really look up and figure out what the ship can and can't do. But he's now in a gun battle with the Tashkent, which is not something you want to be doing, uh, even if you are in a relatively uh, in a relatively good ship, because the Tashkent has 130 millimeter guns, and these guns can hurt. Uh, now, the Van Yang has the distinct advantage that he's got backup, whereas my backup hasn't materialized, because that Eindracht still, is still alive back there, and that I am already on very low hit points, because uh, I have taken a lot of damage from that initial fight with the Eindracht. And uh, I am fully defensive at this point, just trying to, uh, to, trying to dodge torpedoes, uh, at, at dodge sh incoming shellfire as much as possible, and... Uh, I get some torpedoes away just in case, but given that he hasn't launched any torpedoes, makes me believe that this thing actually does have deep water torpedoes. Now, if I had known that, that he wasn't a threat, I could have rushed the Eindracht and then just gunned down the, uh, the Fen Yang, but, you know, would have, should have. <laughs> Uh, let's see if we can manage to still get this thing. Yes, we can. Uh, 321 hit points is 320 more than you need. So uh, now that we've dealt with that unpleasantness here, uh, it is time to get myself the sea cap back because we're not holding any of the capture circles, so we're actually 100 points behind. But yes, uh, this is generally not what you want to do in, in a Tashkent. Uh, this is not an ideal scenario, but if you find yourself in it regardless, then uh, using like uh, using your guns, going bow in, is is not a terrible idea. Uh, alternatively, if you know that the enemy ship doesn't have the water torpedoes, like I did not in this case then uh, you get, you can can uh, you can actually go and rush them. That Eindracht's still alive. Let's see if we can do something about it. Because uh, that guy has been causing me all kinds of grief. Of course, he's now unspotted because he is behind that island. But I can kind of see where he is. There he is. And he was on such low hit points that um, I could finish him off. But I'm down to 2,000 hit points myself, which means uh, for now we are going to be a very cautious gunboat. <laughs> And uh, we'll just be unloading some high explosive shells in the general direction of that Amagi. And I'm trying to set a fire here, but honestly that thing is on so low hit points. I may as well be starting to use the uh, the armor piercing and uh, and use the rapid reload. But uh, there's not an awful lot left of the enemy team, so I think at this point we're pretty much done anyway. So uh, the, the dispar dispersion, by the way, of these guns is not great, as you can see. So I'm... Uh, if, if your target isn't fully broadsiding, it's actually, it can be reasonably difficult to, to actually hit them. Anyway, uh, we've got 2,000 hit points left, and uh, the enemy team only has two destroyers, but they are still ahead on points. But now we're holding all three of the capture circles, and we still have a cruiser somewhere. So I'm, I'm firing my guns to see if, uh, to see if, uh, if the, one of the enemy destroyers is within spotting range. We know that the other one's an A-cup because it's spotted, and that's the Black Shells Mattel. I'm not sure what that thing's capable of either. Yep, there's the enemy destroyer. So engine boost uh, around the island, just to make sure that if there are any uh, any torpedoes, we are not going to be running into them. But I think the Charles Mattel has just run, has just run into the scorner torpedoes, and has gotten torpedoes away by himself. 
but now we can uh, get the rapid reload up and help out with gunfire here because uh, I'm not sure the scorner is going to run into Charles Martel torpedoes but it is forcing him to maneuver so uh, it is giving us a good opportunity to just finish that thing off he now noticed me low health destroyer but way too late so I'm able to gun him down and that just leaves one destroyer left over uh, which is over there I am out of heals I am out of engine boosts and uh, th that is as it, and I'm out of hit points, and that is as it should be, because <laughs> that means you've been, you've been, um, you've been pulling your weight in a battle. And uh, see if we can still catch the Benson unawares. Uh, uh, Charles Martel has having trouble hitting him. Nah, he got him. Well done. And also with that name, uh, I'm sure he had a cunning plan <laughs> to <laughs> uh, to deal with that. Well done. And uh, that is. Sort of not how you're supposed to be playing the Tashkent, but um, it's it can be fun as well. And like I said, sometimes you find yourself into such situations without uh, necessarily uh, your own your own doing. So uh, it can be good to to react accordingly. And yes, we actually had a an AFK Yuga on our team, which brings us to the second battle, which is a five v five on the Okinawa map. And we are facing Amagi, Bismarck, Wichita, Miyoko, and uh, Amehan. And in this case, I've got the fully decked out Tashkent with historical camo, with uh, the with Makarov and everything. So if you're seeing the, uh, this is how many people are currently trying to sink you, uh, indication on screen. That's because of that. Uh, and uh, once again, I am. Um, Sorely tempted to go for the capture circle. There is a Miyoko. There is a single enemy destroyer out there. So I'm going to switch to the armor piercing just in case I'm going to run into it. But uh, I think it was a bot. I think it was a bot destroyer. So uh, not a huge, uh, not a huge threat. And I can be a little more aggressive here and get myself into the position in A and capture that because I do have backup this time around actually from the cruiser. And uh, the other thing, there are a couple of islands here that I can use strategically to defend myself from incoming shellfire. So I'm going to be a bit more careful now. I'm going to slow down. Uh, there is a bot Miyoko, which instantly starts targeting me because proximity. If that was the bot, it might not have been the bot. The bot's shooting at someone else. So someone's still targeting me. So there's still something out there. And uh, I definitely do want to switch over eventually. I'm just wondering if uh, if I will have something to shoot at that requires armor piercing. Uh, we do have an Amagi. That thing I can actually shoot at with AP, honestly, because uh, these these guns are pretty good. But uh, still, high explosive being the better choice here. Um, no one's targeting me right now, which is good. So narrow spread out on the torpedoes. Uh, let's start unloading at the Amagi. Amagi is in reverse. I am within torpedo range, so uh, but we are we are gonna back off, uh, take it uh, take it defensively, get the torpedoes away, and then start maybe setting some fires on the Amagi. So uh, that's one fire. I'm gonna trigger the Damacon. Uh, there is the Damacon. Now we can start the rapid reload and start unloading at this thing, and maybe get a flood from the torpedo if we're lucky as well. But uh, I will, we will see. Yeah, he's still going to take two more torpedoes. That's a perma fire from the Miyoko. Oh no, he's he's run out. He's outrun the torpedo range, which isn't great to begin with, but that's fine. Probably what I should have done differently here would be to actually wait ten seconds. But the Miyoko has capitalized on on it, so he's def uh, his Damacon's definitely on cooldown, and uh, he's got a triple perma fire. And now I have a bot Colorado coming after me, which is more than annoying. Uh, torpedoes away and now we're going to be set, uh, setting ourselves up behind the island there's also a bismarck shooting at me uh, who is sitting over there so i'm going to go defensive against amagi and bismarck and uh, miyoko is helping out we sunk some torpedoes into that colorado but obviously not enough to sink it uh, so given that i am in closest proximity to the bot uh, miyoko is targeting the bismarck already that is quite ambitious because that amagi is still not dead yet but i think he's about to be so I just have to keep an eye on the bot, uh, that, that the bot isn't doing anything about me. I think he's the only one shooting at, shooting at me right now. Fire on the Bismarck. Uh, yeah, uh, the bot has, has done the dance and has actually turned around on the spot, which is quite unfortunate. Now I'm going to drop the torpedoes, but yeah, there you go. This is what bots can do. Whee! But he still took a perma flood out of that. Uh, thanks, Wargaming. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's probably not going to be enough while the bot is dancing furiously to avoid torpedoes at point-blank range. Uh, bots against destroyers are really supremely annoying. 
Uh, I am trying to hit the superstructure, but my guns are pulling low. Uh, managed to get some torpedo hits on something that I wasn't actually uh, targeting. I don't want to. I don't want to get the hits into the uh, into the belt armor, really. Uh, I, I want to hit the superstructure, so um, I might have to manual aim here in a minute if this isn't working for better fire chance. But uh, now, now the bot is sailing away, now manual aiming and now the bot is dancing away underneath my shells. And uh, uh, there's a destroyer out there, someone else can finish this thing off, yeah. <laughs> now he's dancing under the shells, because the hitbox it wasn't quite where it was. Uh, someone can finish that thing off. Uh, I'll do it if no one else wants it, but um, I need to get myself back into the battle. We are le leading on points uh, because of the... Yeah, Leberich Mars, you want to finish that thing? Go on then, finish it. You got until I, uh, you got until I'm back in range. Uh, okay, I'll finish. Okay, we have lost something. No, we haven't actually. The enemy team has uh, has has lost something, and I think that was the Bismarck. So at this point, we're two hundred. We're over two hundred points ahead. We're holding two capture circles, and I think we'll be good. There's one enemy destroyer out there, but this is much more sort of how you want to touch Kent. Uh, stay at range, set fires, use your torpedoes occasionally, make use of. Um, Yep, Mayan, let's kill that. Uh, make make use of the... Uh, nope, missed. He was rushing ahead. I thought he was going to stay in his smoke. Uh, that's fine. It's, uh, uh, he might get torpedoes away at... Uh, is that a bot Colorado? Okay, the bot Colorado can just dodge. Do we still have a bot around at this point? Okay, enemy Miyoko. I've got the rapid reload. I've got the armor piercing. I should be able to do something, especially that this is uh, with APCS. So, uh, what was I saying? Yes, uh, you you generally want to you generally want to try and stay at range, uh, set fires, use your torpedoes occasionally, and use uh, and use hard cover like island cover to your advantage. But uh, if you need to if you need to put the hurt on, the armor piercing is is a good choice there. Uh, Miyoko might be going forward, so let's drop some torpedoes on it. But other than that, we're just going to go and gun it down. Miyoko obviously having torpedoes of its own, so I'm already turning. I'm uh, changing my course and speed, turning ship around. Miyoko is going the other way, but that's okay. We'll just farm a little bit more damage with the guns. Uh, he does not really have a chance, uh, especially that he's the last ship alive. So, uh, Tashkent. It's it's a gunboat. And it is a relative, uh, relatively imprecise gunboat, as you can tell. Leberich Mars can have this one. Uh, it is a gunboat. And uh, you're, you're better off playing in the scout cruiser role than playing in a, as an actual, you know, like... Uh, torpedo boat destroyer or similar it's it's not a bad ship and uh, as long as you're aware of the limitations and you know how to you know go defensive and uh, you don't you don't poke your nose out too far in that regard it's actually somewhat similar to the uh, german scout cruisers even though those things have larger guns but these soviet 130s are pretty good as they are and uh, it's a good destroyer it's a fun ship and uh, you just have to be aware that this is what you're getting yourself into. If you're more, if you're at this point and you don't like the Tashkent, you want something that is more multi-role, that's something that still got good guns, but also got uh, decent usable torpedoes, then uh, going down the other line is, is maybe preferable in your, in your situation. You'll get smoke screens and all kinds of things. So that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.